Hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, so the start of this video, I'm just going over the assignment and maybe throw a couple of hints at you for some of these homework questions because it's it's a, it's a fairly big chapter and so it jumps around in terms of the stuff. Some of it's older, some of it's the stuff we covered in class on Thursday. So, um, and I don't know yet, this is before class, so I don't know yet whether we're going to get to this or not. Um, it depends on a couple of things, and uh, so there might be a screen, short screencast video you have to watch on this. So, you know, you should read the book. It should go fast. I tried to cover stuff pretty well and emphasize the stuff that's most important. So um, those pages in the book should be familiar. Do the checkpoints. Check in the back as you do them in the green book. Um, so here's the one. I, this will be a separate video, um, or I did it in class with you. I don't know how that played out. And this one is is like that. The reason I'm really, you know, making a video or doing this in class is to prep you for, you know, kind of an elastic collision problem. So you're going to use conservation of energy to find the swing speed of the ball, right? And then use conservation of momentum and for elastic collisions, conservation of kinetic energy, which is a pain because then you've got two equations. It sounds nice because it's bouncy, but it's actually a pain. So I'll get to this. This is the video I'm going to be getting to. I'm just overviewing the homework right now. So this is inelastic, so these things stick together. The only thing you get to use for this, and it actually makes your life easier, is conservation of momentum. P before equals P after. So this is like some of the ones we did in class. Uh, this is another one that's different. And this one, you know, they do this. This is college level physics. They're throwing at you. They want you to adapt. Um, so you're having a mid-air collision that's vertical. So when you find that final velocity, then you can s use just kinematics like VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, I think would be the one, to find out how high the combined balls rise after the collision. Um, so uh, this is after the collision, right? So that, that should be pretty straightforward once you apply conservation of momentum. Uh, this is inelastic. And you want to, it's a little bit of a twist because they don't give you the mass of the caboose, which is the uh, the, the train at the end. Um, and so you're going to make a momentum equation, solve for the velocity, and then you're going to use this piece of information here. 27% of the initial kinetic energy is transferred to thermal energy. So that means once you, you're going to use P before equals P after to get, say, the final velocity in terms of the initial velocity, right? And you're going to have the, the mass of the caboose in there, I think, as a variable. You're going to press ahead and use that information to set this up, that the kinetic energy final will equal, uh, well, it's 27% is lost, right? So that's, don't help me, that's going to be uh, 73%. So you can do this. So you want to, you know, this is where you have to expand your thinking a little bit, but now you can do the one-half mv squared, and that should give you enough equation layout. I don't remember exactly how this plays out, but that should give you enough to algebraically solve for the, the mass of the caboose. Um, and maybe it's even easier than I think. Uh, this is another inelastic collision, and my hint here is um, find the final velocity, treat these things like they're it's an inelastic collision, and then figure out the kinetic energy that's that's missing, right? And that's what the spring absorbed, and you can use one half kx squared for that. Um, this is the multiple collision one, so you want to go back to the beginning of the uh, the lesson, or I think I gave you the yeah the book page 213, and you know it it, it takes you through it. Um, you just have to read each piece carefully. Watch the units here, 0.6 milliseconds, which is a really tiny amount of time, right? Um, and two grams, right, instead of kilograms. So it's fire. You know, so th if you go back to that, you should be pretty good with that one. And I think it's an odd one, too, so you can check your... Uh, no, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not an odd one. <laughs> Can't check your answers. All right, last two. So, so you know, you've got to read it carefully. The first thing that it says it happens is that the, the, the L part is shot with this three. So this is a lot like that, that rocket succession problem, except they added this extra layer of, of time and then finding distances. But you need to do the VREL thing. You're going to do conservation of momentum. Find the speed of L. Find the speed of the C and the R coupled together for the first part, keep in mind that it, it moves after that release for 0.8 seconds, then at 0.8 seconds the R is shot to the right, um, and so C and R separate, and then you've got to, you know, use motion thinking to figure out, you know, the position, you know, for part B, right? So, um, 
good luck. And last one, I think, this is it, um, is another one, right, where you've got a module and a shuttlecraft moving a thousand. So this is a lot like um, ones that were due on Thursday. And so you you know the added layer to this is you you're gonna find you're gonna use conservation of momentum and the VRL idea to find the velocities of both things afterwards, but then they're asking you to uh, compa basically compare the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy initial is going to be pretty easily figured out because you've got the total 900 going a thousand meters per second the kinetic energy final. Now these guys are separate entities, so you're going to figure out that, see how much bigger it is, and then see um, the fraction increase for that. Okay? And I think that's the end of the story. It is. Okay, so if you, I, I think I probably had, in Google Classroom put the link timed up to this point for Ballistic Pendulum. You see that the video has extra stuff at the beginning. You can scroll back for homework hints as needed, right? I didn't want you to make you watch me blather about the problems, especially there's a chance I might have gone over it in class. Um, in any case, a Ballistic Pendulum, this is how before photo gates, um, you know, if you were, say, you know, making a projectile launcher, a gun, this is how they used to measure the velocity of the very fast bullets, is they'd have a heavy block of wood hanging from strings like that picture, and they would fire the bullet into it. So we're using lowercase m for the mass of the bullet. This will be our initial velocity, and our goal is to find that initial velocity in terms of h max. and so let me explain what h max is. Well, really, we have to break this thing into two future moments. So there's a middle moment where the block has already been hit by the bullet, the bullet has stopped, and that happens so quickly that we can get away with treating it as an instantaneous collision. And there is this intermediate velocity that the, uh, the bullet and the block have before it's swung up any distance. Right? And we're going to use conservation of momentum for that because it's a, that's a completely inelastic collision. But then, that velocity is kinetic energy, and the, and the whole combination swings up to an h max. And so they had uh, ways to measure up, measure where it got to, find the angle, or, or different things, and they could, you know, backtrack and figure out the initial velocity of the bullet. And so we're, we want to figure out vi in terms of that, but we can't just say, the key, and here's the, the key, very important big idea. The kinetic energy of this bullet does not equal the gravitational potential energy that the bullet block combination have at the end. And that's, I'm not saying energy is not conserved, but as we learned on Thursday, we lose some heat, right? That collision actually causes, you know, some of the kinetic energy to be turned into heat. Okay, and that depends on the relative masses of everything. So anyway, we're going to, you know, start do it in the order that occurs, so conservation of momentum wise, P before equals P after, so little mass of the bullet, initial velocity, so we're going to get back and solve for that. That's going to equal the two masses together, so at the end point, we've got the little bullet in with the big block. I put these little legs on my big M so I can kind of keep track of it, and that's that intermediate V, this is a different V, and uh, let's just put that on the side burner for a second and go over to conservation of energy. So now we've lost some energy due to heat, but now the kinetic energy that we have at this instance will be equal to the gravitational potential energy there. So I'm using conservation of energy, so the energy in this mid position, right, after the collision has stopped, equals the energy at H max. It's pretty simple, right? So kinetic energy is one half mass, so it's the total mass that intermediate velocity squared uh, is equal to the total mass, right, mgh, h max. Okay, so again, what do we want? Well, we want to get the initial velocity. That's that's what if we were working for Winchester or Colt or whatever, you know, and we were you know wanted to give them the equation they would use. We're just going to plug that in. So I'm going to solve this blue equation for the velocity and bring it over to the black equation, right? And the masses cancel, right? Just like they do when we've done this before. And I'll get velocity equals uh, square root of 2gh, right? Max. And then we're going to bring that over here. And so I'm going to divide both sides by the little m. And so I'll get little m plus big M over little m. Right, here's my vi, and then times that. And that's it. It's not complicated. Um, 
but I just thought that rather than squeeze it in as an additional thing in class, it would be good to look at it um, separately. So, you know, this idea would come across. I wouldn't say that the equation we derived is anything that I would, I don't know it in my head. I might be able to guess at it, but I, I don't memorize stuff, and we don't use it a lot. It's more of the concept is historically important in physics, and it fits right into the stuff we're doing. So, uh, again, if you need, uh, if you want a little coaching on the homework, go to the beginning of this video. Thanks for watching.